everyone welcome to today's process video I have for you so the first thing you're gonna see me do here is I'm flipping through some products I received from a cherry on top this is American Crafts brand new hazelwood collection and I didn't order all of the pieces to it I really very rarely order an entire collection uh, just some of the papers and things I thought that I would like to use um, and I tried something new this time in order to pack of rub-ons and you'll see how that works out because I'm going to do them on my layout. So this layout goes with a challenge I am hosting at a cherry on top. I host a monthly challenge there just about every month on the message boards and I flip it around. I've hosted a number of different challenges but for January for 2017 I'm going to host a challenge with a layout prompt. So instead of a sketch or a long set of rules, I'm just going to offer the cherries there a phrase or even just a word and um, we're going to create layouts based on that phrase or word. So January's uh, word that I chose was happy and I chose to interpret it by playing with products and techniques and things that make me happy. So I went ahead and grabbed another lesson in Chamel's Design Decisions class because that makes me happy. And I chose a photo because that made me happy and made me smile of my nephew. And then I chose brand new product because doesn't brand new product always make you happy the first time you use it? So that's uh, how I chose to interpret the prompt. But there are lots of ways that you can interpret it and I will leave a link below to that challenge prompt in case you would like to play along this month. So I'm starting out with um, creating almost like an L, backwards L-shaped design, a little bit bigger and chunkier at the bottom, a little lighter at the top. So we have some dark colors and this gorgeous, gorgeous pattern paper and I wanted to I chose these papers because, well, I like the idea of having little bits of blue. I loved the orange tones in this photo. I, and I just loved how some of the orangey peachy colors in the Hazelwood collection set off the tones, the orangey tones in this photo. I'm going to use a little bit of blue too in this uh, houndstooth paper. And I'm just going to create a little mat. I'm kind of being careful because the other side's a cut apart sheet and there are some cut aparts on that sheet that I really would like to use. So I'm just going to map my photo and I'm going to ink all of my edges with uh, Hickory Smoke Distress Ink. I've been using that a lot lately and I'm so silly because I wanted to do this journaling on my card but it was too small. So I cut it down and I pretty much cut off all of that decorative edge. So I pretty much ended up with just a white 3x4 card which is utterly silly because I could have not wasted that journaling card and I could have just gone ahead and used um, white cardstock. Duh! But I didn't. I cut it up. Oh well. <laughs> I didn't think of it till after it was all done, so it still got used. That's what I'm going with. That's my story. And um, I was wrong. I'm not inking the edges with gray. I'm inking the edges with vintage photo. Probably because while there is some gray tones in this paper, that picture is so nice and warm, and so I wanted to add the brown to it. So I'm laying up, layering up what will be my journaling block with my matted photo. I'm just continuing those lines. Now, I want more on that vertical line but I want it to kind of drift off in a way so I, I want the the base the the impact of the photo to be more down and I also um, I want the heavier items to be at the bottom of the page but I do want a little bit more of a vertical line that goes up I just want it to be light so that's going to be my title from the thicker collection I'm just checking on the placement of it. And fortunately, it is American Crafts chipboard, which means it's not very sticky. So, you know. My next step was I decided I wanted to do some hand stitching. In order to accomplish that, I took a pencil and I very, very um, lightly just drew swirls everywhere. I drew a swirly line that starts up close to the top and you can see it kind of meander down through everything. So I'm going to take um, a needle and some thread and I'm going to go ahead and punch some holes and do a little bit of hand stitching on that line that I drew. 
So I went ahead and left some of my stitching in this video just so you can see a little bit of how I backstitch. So I do not like threading needles at all. I really, really don't like threading needles. So I'm go if I'm going to hand stitch on something, I start out with a length, the length of thread that is longer than anyone has a right to try to stitch with. It's just, it's crazy. So, um, but yeah, that's how I do it. <laughs> So I, and the nice part is, like at the beginning, it wants to snag and stuff, and you have to be really careful while you're backstitching, but I hand stitched this whole line without having to change thread. So I'm willing to deal with a little bit of snaggy thread at the beginning so that I don't have to re-thread my needle. And there is our hand stitching all done, um, and actually this is the next morning because I sat and did this um, at the night before I finish the layout. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to place that title and get it situated where I want it. And I also knew right away that I wanted to put this little arrow here to face towards the photo of my nephew. <clears throat> and then the other thing that I knew before I, when I was planning this layout out in my head and how I wanted it to work was I wanted to do uh, this little sticker that says Adventure It Waits. And then I wanna talk about my nephew. He lives far away, a couple hours drive, and I don't get to see him very often, but his mom is awesome about social media. And so I get lots of Facebook pictures and super cute things. And that's what this photo is from, actually. I didn't take it, his mom took it. So the, it's dated, and I wrote some journaling about how nice it is in this day and age with social media that I can watch my nephew grow, and I still get to see videos, and I get to FaceTime with him, and different things like that. So that's what the journaling was all about, and I just did it with my Muji pen. So now I'm going to do a couple of very small embellishment clusters. I didn't want anything to be... Um, I really wanted the, the, your focus on this layout to be the photo and secondarily that gorgeous strip of pattern paper at the bottom. So the, the layout, the embellishment cl clusters are going to be kind of light and airy and um, just really sweet. And I don't mind putting flowers on this page at all. <laughs> I'm not opposed to flowers on boy layouts for any, I'm just, I'm really not. It's totally fine. And I adding some extra adhesive to my chipboard here. And then I'm gonna play with these rub-ons. So I don't buy rub-ons. Um, it's been literally years. The last pack of rub-ons I bought were from Basic Rye. So that'll give you a good hint of how long ago they were. And they were from the Curio collection. So crazy, crazy old. I haven't bought rub-ons since then, but I, you know, I've seen a lot of people use them recently and I just kind of was like, mm, maybe I'll try these. And then that Hazelwood collection has these butterflies and they're gorgeous, like two solid pages of these gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous butterflies. But these rub-ons, I was reminded totally as to why I don't buy them. So they're super, super, super sticky which means that if I laid them down on anything but their backer sheet, the rub-ons were wanting to come off onto everything. They came off onto my hands, they were coming off. But when I cut them apart and then tried to actually stick them to the paper, they weren't sticking to the paper. Like pieces of them were and pieces of them weren't. And I was reminded why I don't like rub-ons. But it's a very good thing that these butterflies are so stinking cute. And I prob I will use all of them if I don't ruin them. Because I did end up ruining like two or three here. So that green one at the top, I did ruin it. But I fixed it with a dash of <laughs> strategically placed Heidi, gold, Heidi Spot gold, gold color shine. Oh my, I can't talk. And that's how I solved that problem. So we'll see... Keep your eyes open for maybe some more layouts. We'll see how this uh, how this works out with these rub-ons. If I can get the hang of them, or if they're just going to be an epic fail. So, but now our layout is completely finished. Easy, easy layout. Just you know, very sweet and nice. And I love how this turned out. Thank you for joining me today, and I will see you more this week with some more process videos. Have a lovely day. Bye.